Come thou fount of every blessing To my heart to sing thy praise Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise my Ebenezer Hither by thy help I come And I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at home Jesus sought me Oh, to grace, thou great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a feather, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, don't take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Will you bow your heads with me? Lord, this is a season of change. Be with us in all of the times that we need you the most and that we seek your love and grace. And thank you for being with us in those times. And in your name we pray. Amen. Thousand elsewhere, my heart of flesh. 
my heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God. Your spirit's water to my soul. I've tasted and I've seen. Come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near to Better is a one day in your courts. Better is a one day in your house. Better is a one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Better is a one day in your courts. Better is a one day in your house. Better is a one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Than a thousand elsewhere. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wimberley United Methodist Church. It's so good to have all of you here. If you would, please take a seat for just a moment. We have a few announcements that we want to lift up. And the first of which is, for some reason, prayers of the people is in the wrong place in your bulletin. So uh, put that below children's time and know that we are doing it. It'll just come in a different place. Um, if you would, please grab the Welcome to Wimberley card that came in your bulletin. Flip it around and fill out the back for us. This um, is, it does a few things for us. One, it just helps us to, to take attendance, to check in on those who aren't here and to make sure everything is all right. It helps us to make sure that all of our contact information is correct for everyone. And it helps us to follow up and celebrate visitors present with us this morning. So please take a moment, fill that out, and then hold on to it until the time of offering, at which point we're going to invite you to place it in the offering plate along with any gifts that you have this morning for worship. If you have any prayer requests that you would like lifted up, please grab one of the green-headed prayer request cards, fill it out, and give it to our ushers following children's time, and we'll be happy to include your joys and concerns in what we lift up to God together. This is a special Sunday in the life of the church. This is All Saints Sunday, and so our prayers this morning will also include a reading of the names of all of those from our, our church family and from the community that have passed in the, the past year. And so we want to make sure that we include all of the names that need to be included as we lift them up. I have all of the names of those who have passed from our, our church family, our membership, but if you have names that you would like lifted up in prayer especially of those who have passed in the last year, but also of those who have, have passed in years previous that you're still holding on to, that you're still grieving. We want, to, we want to grieve alongside you, and we want to lift up those names. And so if you will fill out one of these prayer request cards with the name of the person you would like included and put just a big star in that green space at the top, I will make sure to include the name that, that you write down in those that are lifted up later in the service when we get to the reading of the All Saints prayers. You'll also have a chance to share out loud or silently the joys and concerns you have if you don't want to write them down. Uh, but if you would like these names included in what are lifted up for the All, Saints, um, the All Saints celebration, please make sure to turn in one of those cards. One final announcement on your way into the sanctuary. You should have received one of our 2019 stewardship campaign pledge cards. I wanted to just give a brief moment of explanation on it. If you'll flip it over to the back, you'll see not only an area for you to fill out just your regular contact information, but also an area for you to uh, pledge to see how you were going to engage in discipleship in 2020. Uh, this is, is much more than just, are you going to give to the church? That's important, and we want to make sure that that's highlighted, but that's not the only thing that this is about. As members of a United Methodist Church, we make five vows about how we are going to support the congregation. Through our prayers, through our presence, through our gifts, through our service, and through our witness. And so you have a space to write how you are going to engage in those five vows throughout 2020. How many times are you going to pray daily in 2020? How many Sunday services or other worship times are you going to come and participate actively in uh, the, the worship of the church uh, by, by being present for it? How much are you going to give on a monthly or yearly basis? How are you going to serve and how often are you going to serve in your community? And finally, and this is the most important and honestly the hardest, how many people in 2020 are you going to pledge to speak the gospel to? How many people are you going to proclaim Jesus Christ crucified and risen to in this next year? Hold on to this. Pray through it. 
and fill it out. You can turn it in any time in November. And I mean, since it's the church, you can turn it in any time you want. But, you know, we do have that budget that we have to make. So if you would, please turn it in any time in November. Uh, and, and we will we'll be checking in with you in 2020. We'll be checking in with, with how you're doing. Not, not asking, you know, hey, I noticed that you've only been praying once a week. But just as a, a how are you? How is it with your soul? How are you doing with the ways that you pledged to serve the, the church and, and serve God in this space? So that we together can, can move into greater discipleship um, and, and greater, um, greater community as we live further into what we are called to do. You can turn this in anytime in our offering plate or mail it to the church office or um, give it to um, any of our ushers and they'll be happy to take care of that for you. These are the announcements that we have, uh, but before we move on in the service, I just want to say to all of the kids here, we're so happy that you're here. We're so glad to have young people in this space, and we want you to know that you are absolutely welcome here in this space with us. We want to make sure that you get the most out of this time as possible, and so we have a number of ways that we're going to invite you to be able to engage in worship with us. One is to grab a worship bag in the back. If you want something that's just tactile that will help you with what we're doing and help you understand uh, the different aspects of worship, go grab a worship bag and, uh, and rifle through it and see what's in there and see how you can use it to better participate in worship. Um, another way is through our kids' church that Miss Courtney's going to come up here and, and tell us a little bit about what they're talking about in, um, in our, our children's time here in a moment. But if you want to go to kids' church with her and with um, a, a few other kids and adults, uh, know that that is available for you as well. We want you to be able to participate as you feel called and led in this time of worship. And so these are available to you. And I'm going to invite Miss Courtney to come up and lead us in our, our time of children's time. Uh, and invite all the kids to come up as well. So if you would like to come up and join us, uh, come on up. I'm going to stay right here. Okay. It's just us. Hi, guys. Um, do you guys know what this is? Anybody? Thanks, girls. Thanks, guys. Come on up. It is a trophy. Mm-hmm. I just left it. Yeah, for what? Soccer. Mm-hmm. Baseball. Hi, Laurel. Come on up. Yep. What about this one? Mm-hmm. First place. A ribbon. Yes, for art. So, all of these. Why do people get these kinds of things? you know? Why would you get something that said first place? Olivia? Because Jesus loves us. Because Jesus loves us? Yeah. Man, I do think that Jesus gives us first place ribbons. Because what? Jesus. You want to say it? Because they worked hard for something, so they earned that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have to give someone a medal or a ribbon or a trophy to make them feel special? No? Do you need a trophy or a medal or a ribbon to feel special? No? Well, all the time. I mean, it feels good sometimes, right? To receive something like that, especially if you've worked really hard. Um, I could embarrass. What is this one from? Uh... Hudson first art contest first place in art good job buddy wherever you are um, so yeah it feels good sometimes right to do that hey Jojo stick with us dude um, so this month in small group which happens at Sunday school time and at kids church which happens um, during the 11 o'clock service um, we're going to be learning about two guys from the Old Testament we heard about one this morning um, hey, Corinne or Macy or Westland, do you remember who we talked about this morning? I guess that this is about husband. David. Yeah, so we're going to be focusing on some stories about David and also a guy named Daniel. And we're going to look at some events in their lives. Whoa, no way, buddy. Down we get. Um, look at, at some events in their lives and how those events help us with our life app, which is, do we have a slide for honor? 
No. Um, so our life app this month, which means um, what we're going to be focusing on all month, is honor. And that means letting someone know how valuable they are. Okay? And that someone could be God. That could be a friend. Um, that really could be anyone. Right? Um, and in all of our family ministry programs, whether it's Wednesday night um, or Sunday mornings, we really value placing God's word on our heart, which means memorizing Bible verses. Um, and our Bible verse this month is from Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Love one another deeply, honor others more than yourselves. So here's the challenge, sort of like in high five, right? Memory verses. Anyone, adults included, if you can come up to me this month and tell me that you know that memory verse and say it by heart, you'll get a surprise. A surprise is a surprise, so I can't tell you what it is. So love one another deeply, honor others more than yourself. So I am really looking forward to exploring the life of David and Daniel with you guys all month long. And he gone. And I would like you guys to pray with me right now. Will you guys do that? Will you guys repeat after me? Everyone can repeat after me as we say this prayer. Rachel, please, Olivia. Dear God. Thank you for your word. Give us open ears and ready hearts to learn more about you and how to live a life of honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so anybody who wants to go to Kids Church um, can come with me right now and... We will go straight out. Kyle, will you wave your hand? Go to Mr. Kyle, and we'll go out that way. Thank you, Ms. Courtney. Uh -huh. okay, so that's All right, as we move now into our time of prayer, if you have prayer cards that need to make their way uh, forward, if you'll bring them toward the center, um, Kyle, after he's holding the door open for everyone, will um, grab those and hand them to me. So if you have prayer cards, if you'll send them my way. We'll begin with our reading of names. Steve Burgle. Kay Bowman. Barbara Aiken. Anne Fortescue. Bobby Frady. Bud Gunderlock. <coughs> Don Perkins. Marjorie Reed. Doug Smith. Ruth Young. Claire Lober. Catherine Cooksey. Gerald Peterson. Marathor Sobalvaro. Miriam Solis. Bert Thorne. Steve Gartside. Steve Gartside, Jr. Doug Beerstead. A 
Erlene Skiles. God, we remember these, your saints. We praise you for the impact they had on our lives. Hold us tight when we are still mourning. Remind us that you grieve with us. Give us peace to know that we will see our loved ones again. This we pray in your name. Amen. As we move now into our time of offering, if you would please uh, remember to place the Welcome to Wimberley card in the offering plate as it comes around, and let us go to God in prayer. God, receive now our gifts that we give unto you. May you bless them, may you multiply them. May you use them in miraculous ways to bring your kingdom to this place. God, may this time be a time where we are investing in your kingdom in our community. And may you use us to see this investment through. This we pray in your name. Amen. Shout 
The reading today is Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may speak and declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, speak to us now that we would hear not from me, for what I have to say does not matter but that we would hear from you. God, change us through the hearing of and meditating upon your word. This we pray in your name. Amen. Well, I think it's safe to say that we've all been there before, one time or another. Maybe because you accidentally skipped a meal, maybe because you were trying to be a little bit more um, spiritual and decided to try fasting for the first time. Maybe it's just that you didn't eat enough and you did too much that was causing you to burn more than you thought you would. But you get to the point where you're not just hungry. You're angry about how hungry you are. You are, in a word, hangry. And being hangry is not a good thing. Being hangry can be a very bad thing. Being hangry can be a destructive thing. Because when you're hangry, you can't always control what you say, can you? And when you're hangry, you can't always control what you do. If that were the case, then we wouldn't have a slew of Snickers commercials to laugh at all the time. About people who are doing things they shouldn't do when they are hangry and how they just need a Snickers to remind them who they are and what they're called to be doing. It's part of the human condition that sometimes we just find ourselves a little hangry. But that leads us to a pretty interesting theological question. If Jesus the Christ is both 100% divine 100% God, and also 100% human. Did Jesus ever get hangry? Hear now this reading from Mark chapter 11, verses 12 through 14, and verses 20 through 25. The next day, after leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. From far away, he noticed a fig tree in leaf, so he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing except leaves, since it wasn't the season for figs. So he said to it, no one will ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard this. Early the next morning, as Jesus and his disciples were walking along, they saw the fig tree. And it was withered from the roots up. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look how the fig tree you cursed has dried up. And Jesus responded, have faith in God. I assure you that whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not waver, but believes that what is said will really happen, it will happen. Therefore, I say to you, whatever you pray and ask for, believe that you will receive it, 
and it will be so for you. And whenever you stand up to pray, if you have something against anyone, forgive so that your Father who is in heaven may forgive you your wrongdoings as well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it would look like from a simple reading of Mark chapter 11 that yes, in fact, Jesus does get hangry at least once in his life, right? As he goes to this fig tree, finds nothing to eat upon it, and curses it so harshly that in a day's time it withers up and dies. Is that the point of this story? That as a disciple of Christ, I need to make sure that I always have a Snickers in my pocket for Jesus? Or is there something more going on here? There are some really good popular explanations for what is happening that are legitimate readings of this text. Uh, One of them is that we need to remember the real power and awe of prayer. That prayer has power and that we yield that power, right? It's like the story in 2 Kings of the prophet Elisha who, after some young people make fun of him for being bald, calls down two she-bears to attack them. Prayer is powerful. Maybe this is a reminder of that for us, not from a prophet, but from the Messiah himself. Another legitimate interpretation of this text is reminding us about the need to bear fruit in our own lives so that when Jesus comes to us as we have leaves upon us and looks for the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, Jesus will find fruit on our branches. Maybe that's what this story of the fig tree is about. Don't be caught fruitless like this fig tree was. But I gotta tell y'all, if this story is really about either of those two things, I'm struggling. Because where is the grace in that? Where is the grace for this fig tree that did nothing wrong according to the story? It says in Scripture that it was not the time for figs, and yet... Jesus curses it. Where is the resurrection resolution in this story if it is simply about the power and awe of prayer or the need to bear fruit? I shared my struggles with our our Wednesday night Bible study this week and said that I I don't know what to do with this story. We talked about it for about an hour, and we decided a few things. One, Jesus is not just physically hangry, he's also spiritually hangry during this uh, this time. And so he's dealing with this on a a two-pronged front. Um, But when that didn't really answer any of our questions as well, we we decided to look at the context a little bit of the story and what was going on around it. This is one of those stories that we only get in the Gospel of Mark, and we get it in something that is only found in Mark. It's what's called a Markin sandwich, where the beginning of this story and the end of this story happens with something in the middle. The bread is the story of the fig tree and the cursing of it and the observing the curse of it. The middle is a story entirely separate that has nothing to do seemingly with the fig tree itself. It's the story of Jesus going into the temple in Jerusalem and throwing what I like to call the temple tantrum. He starts overturning tables. He opens up all of the cages of all of the animals that are there to be sold for sacrifice. He drives out all of the money changers and everyone there who are making money off of people who come to worship. And he tells them, it is written, my house is a house of prayer but you have turned it into a den of robbers. It's an interesting context for the story of the fig tree to happen with this story in the middle of it. It gets even more complicated when you look at the verse immediately prior to the fig tree story, where Jesus, the night before, goes into the temple, observes everything that's happening, turns around, and leaves. Was he fuming over it overnight, and that's why he lashed out at the fig tree? 
Is that why he acts as he does when he goes into the temple itself? Was the temple tantrum premeditated? What do we do with this story and what does it tell us about the fig tree? Well, someone in our group pointed out to me that maybe this story is showing Jesus engaging in two different options for what happens when he encounters something that he did not want to encounter. First is the option of the fig tree. We're finding no fruit. Jesus curses it and walks away. The second option is what happens within the temple. For even though Jesus overturns the tables, drives out all of those making money off of worship, he never curses them. It's as if he's not leaving the temple to die, but he's cultivating, pruning that which needs to be removed so that growth can happen and so that fruit can be born. The first option discounts and disowns that which doesn't bear fruit. The second option, it works to fix the issues. And to leave room for right living and right engagement in the world to happen. The former ends with a fig tree withered and dead. The latter ends with restoring right worship. And more of the people of God coming to follow Jesus Christ. And what Jesus tells us in this story is the same options that he had, the same choices that he made, are available to us as well. In verses 22 through 25, we hear him say that if we have faith enough and if we are certain enough in our prayers, there is nothing that we cannot pray for that God will not give to us. So maybe what he's saying here is that what he did through action and the choices that he had before him in his actions are the same choices that we make in our prayers. Maybe we have the ability to curse in our prayers or to cultivate. I think that's what Paul was trying to get across in his epistles. Paul talked about prayer almost more than anything else in his letters. And every time, it wasn't just pray for me, although that did happen because he yearned for the prayers of the people of God. It wasn't even just pray for your group. It was pray for the community that you are in so that they might experience God. It was pray for the church that you have never met in an entirely different part of the world. It was even pray for your enemies. Pray for those who are persecuting you. Pray for those who are making it hard for you not just to be a Christian, but to live. Paul knew that prayer had power. Paul knew that prayer was important. Paul knew that we have the same choices that Jesus had in this text. And that if we live into them appropriately, true prayer has the power to cultivate, the power to grow, the power to change the world around us. Now it needs to be noted that these choices and engaging in either cursing or cultivating, there's pain that comes along with that, right? The tree felt the pain of the curse. But in the cultivating, it wasn't the temple or the people within the temple who felt the pain. It was Jesus himself who shortly after this will be arrested, tried, convicted, and crucified. There's pain attached with either choice. And we, like our God, are called to make the hard choice that might lead to us experiencing that pain ourselves. 
when that happens, may we remember that Jesus did not stay on the cross. And the resurrection power that brought him from the grave will be our power as well. That the pain that we might experience in doing the work of God and in investing in our community and in cultivating good fruit born around us, that's a pain that will end and will be replaced with glory. So may we invest in our church and our community through prayer. May we know that like Jesus, we have choices available to us, choices to curse or choices to cultivate. When we find ourselves spiritually hangry, may we lean on our God for the strength to make the right choice. And may we always choose to bear fruit in the name of God our Father. Amen. As we move now into uh, preparing to receive communion, I uh, want to let y'all know a little bit about what our communion offering is going to be, our communion rail offering this morning. Um, each month for communion, we pick a different ministry of the community in the area to highlight and to celebrate as we, uh, as we come to the table so that we might continue to pour into one another. And this month, we're celebrating Crisis Bread Basket. A, a ministry that we have supported for years in this church. And so when you come to the railing, you're going to be invited to, if you feel so led, to leave an offering that will go toward this ministry that feeds the hungry among us, that doesn't ask um, questions to, to vet and make sure that you can check off all the boxes, but says if you are hungry and you live here in our community, then we are going to feed you. So please prayerfully consider how you can be a part of this uh, ministry through your gifts today. Um, if you cannot give today monetarily, we always have a shopping basket in our fellowship hall that we will collect your non-perishable goods and take them to Crisis Bread Basket for you. If you would ever like to make a monetary donation to them outside of today, please let me know and we will happily help you with that as well. Um, so know that this is an absolutely worthwhile mission and please consider to, um, to give toward it today as you come up to receive. Now let us pray. God, we thank you that you'd never leave us spiritually hangry, that you never leave us wanting without, but God, you constantly pour into us. Nowhere is that more seen than when we come to your table, when we partake of the bread and the juice that might not fill our bellies, but God absolutely can fill our souls. May you remind us just what it is like to receive from you the one who has given everything for us. And may we hear your words as you spoke them to the disciples so long ago, as you told them that this was your body given for them, your blood, the cup of the new covenant poured out for them, that when they received it, they should take and eat and drink always in remembrance of you, celebrating what you have done and participating regularly in your great gift of salvation. So God, we come to do that now. We come to remember your great gift. We come to celebrate your grace and participate in your salvation again. So would you please, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them through some holy mystery, the body and blood of Christ, that as we receive from them, as we partake of them, God, we would become your body broken, your blood poured out and given for the world. May your spirit make us one, Lord. Set us to doing. May we be your people. May we meet you here. This we pray in the great and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ given for you.
As our servers come forward, we have just a, a few reminders for you. First of all, we'll be serving by intinction, which means you'll get a piece of bread, you'll dip it into the cup of grape juice and take both elements together. We'll have two side serving aisles and a gluten-free station here in the middle. Uh, know that this is prepared for you. Know that you are welcome here. Know that Christ himself has made a place for you at this table. So come, for all is prepared and everyone is welcome.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you. May it be the foundation upon which you stand, the grace by which you live your life, and the love through which you share the gospel message with the world. Amen. We have a few invitations that we would like to give to you in ways to engage with us um, this coming week. And actually, the first one is a thank you for ways that y'all engaged this week. Uh, for any and everyone who was able to help in any way with the Trunk or Treat, um, thank you so much for helping provide um, a, a safe space for kids to go um, trick-or-treating along the square and for being a part of the community work. Um, it was a wonderful night, and thank you for all who were a part of that. Our mission's Christmas Giving Fair is going on right now in the Fellowship Hall. Um, and, and not only do we have some wonderful stuff there that you can uh, purchase for um, different people for, for Christmas, but we have a lot of fun information about some of the different ministries that we are engaged in as a church and in the community. And we have an enchilada plate uh, lunch special going on right now. And so if you would like to help support the, the Bright Beginnings Preschool through the purchase of lunch, which I know is going to be absolutely amazing, uh, please head from here next door to do so. Um, last invitation, please just don't forget about the pledge cards that you received. If you have any questions about them, please let me know. Uh, and prayerfully consider how you can answer each one of those five questions uh, so that we are able to fully engage in our vows as members and in the work of growing as disciples. These are the invitations that we have for today. So let us stand and sing together our sending forth song, Be Thou My Vision.
I uh, forgot at the beginning of the service to uh, welcome Andy as our um, sub-worship leader for the month of November. Uh, Billy is taking uh, some personal leave, so we're happy to have the, the better looking and more talented of the Roy brothers here with us. So, uh, Andy, thank you for, for jumping in and, and uh, helping lead us, not just today, but throughout the, the month of November. Uh, you're a blessing to us. So. Thank you. And now hear this benediction. Go from this place as God's people ready to invest in the community around you through prayer. Go knowing that you have a choice available to you in how you engage the world around you. You can do that through curse or cultivation. Go choosing cultivation. Go knowing that your prayer is powerful and that God has called you to use that to bring God's kingdom to this place. So go in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.